Full time. <clears throat> Bournemouth 2, Man United 2. This is one of the worst sides of Man United that you'll ever see. You know? Do we have football players or we have people who are just here <clears throat> to obviously choose the man of the club and really see the season end, see managers leave, and don't really do the need for Liverpool expectation? And guys, I've already told you, heads should roll at the club of Manchester United. Heads should roll. <clears throat> heads should roll at the club of Man United. These players are not good enough to be players of Manchester United. I tell you, they're not good enough to be players of Manchester United. <laughs> not at all. They are nowhere near the levels of being called Manchester United players. <clears throat> you come in a game of football like this, when Spurs have gone ahead to drop three points, you know, Arsenal is hosting Aston Villa, which is a given. <clears throat> Arsenal is going to be beating Aston Villa. That is tomorrow. And you're going to be having 51 points to close in to be nine points behind these teams yet Aston Villa has to play Chelsea they have to play Liverpool Tottenham Hotspur has to play Chelsea they have to play Arsenal they have to play <coughs> Man City and they have to play Liverpool and you come out and you drop points in such a very important game of the season it's not all about the manager I tell you whoever player is picked has to come up and live up to the expectation into that game it should be a must it should be a bare minimum for any united player to come up and really show up because these same players have gone ahead to hold interviews and talked about how they want to be in the champions league you understand these players have shown us how <coughs> They've come out and really spoken how they want to be playing the Champions League, how they are really hungry to play in the Champions League. Now, how many games are we going to hit to play and how many points are we going to hit to drop? I count you, all the points you've going to hit to drop in the last four are not onto the manager. I tell you, first and foremost, we return from international break, <coughs> we play against Brentford. Guess what happens? We take a lead, you know, and we fail to defend and we give the goalie the dying minutes, two points dropped. We play against Chelsea, we lead by three goals to two. In the last 80 seconds, we find ourselves into the losing area. You know, <clears throat> those are how many points dropped? Five. Against Liverpool, we have a very good 20 minute start. We switch off until the remaining 35 that we really led to the end of the to the end of the <clears throat> to the end of the half time. Second half, Bruno Fernandes equalizes. Kobe Mainu scores a stunner. Guess what happens? Aaron Van Bissaka comes out and gives a penalty. Stupid penalty. You understand? Seven points dropped. And today, in four games, we've gone ahead to drop nine points. And we've been in positions of winning these games of football. But these players have not gone ahead, obviously, pay what we call the dual agency to win the game of football. And get the nine points. Add them onto the. Are we having. How many are we having now? Let me even check. I don't even remember how many points Man United is really having into this. Into this ill. Because I'm really pissed. And I just want to get this season to end. Guys, I'm fed up of football. Of Man United. I want this season to come to an end. When is the season ending? I want it to come to an end. That is it. I want. I want I want this season to end. I tell you, I'm fed up. I'm fed up of everything. Whether we win the FA Cup or not, <clears throat> I'm fed up. I'm fed up. We are having 50 points. We are having 50 points. And guess what? We came to this game of football knowing that Newcastle, a team that is having a better goal difference than us, is having 50 points. And now we are level with Newcastle at 50 points a team that i never even had in mind that will obviously come close to the where we are but look if you go ahead and really not win any of the games you've gonna hate to play in the last four this is what happens to you and now we are having six games left 18 points to play for 18 points to play for and if you're aston villa and tottenham hotspur you will be jubilating because you know all right that's what manchester united has gonna hate to do all what I need is eight points. That is it. All what they need are eight points.
points to obviously seal off that because they're having six games to play they get two wins and two draws they're into the champions league i tell you i tell you and i guarantee you manchester united cannot win all its remaining games to clinch 68 points we can we can't if you can't win away against brentford if you can't beat if you can't beat the side called Bournemouth to really get six points, then you are not into the Champions League talk talk. You are nowhere near that. You are nowhere near that. And I tell you, we are really doomed to fail because of the players of Man United. I tell you, you look at the team playing and you ask yourself, what are they doing? You look at Marcus Rashford and you ask yourself, is this the kind of player who earns £330,000 a week? Sorry, earns £340,000 a week. Is he this kind of player who is earning this huge amount of money at the club of Man United? You know? <clears throat> look at... Uh, look at... Uh, <clears throat> however much Bruno Fernandes had to score in a breast. But ask yourself, uh, from, apart from scoring those two goals, what else did he do? His role is to come up and really create chances and feed Marcus Rashford, uh, Ganacho, Ahmad Diallo, and Rasmus Hoyland. Did he do anything like feeding those players? Did he feed his number nine any ball? Now, where do you find a number 10 in the world who cannot really feed his number nine, <clears throat> you know, in the previous four games? Have you gonna hate to see Bruno feed this guy? Only in the game of Brentford, that is it. Show me any other game where Bruno Fernandes intended to feed our number nine. That game is not there. You look at it and you are not obviously going to do the needful. When you look at Rasmus Hoyland, let me see how many games he has gone here to play for the club of Man United. Rasmus Hoyland played, I think, five games in the Champions League, right? If I'm not mistaken, right? He played five in the Champions League, right? Five games in the Champions League. Out of the goals he scored... Bruno Fernandes never had no assist, never had any assist into those. In the Premier League game, he has gone ahead to play 24 games. Hear me out. He has gone ahead to play 24 games and Bruno Fernandes has only tried to look out for him in the game of Brentford that we played last weekend but one. You understand? Now, which type of number 10 is that? When I come out and really talk about this, people will say, look at his stats. Look at his stats. Right. Now, Eric or Chan, check your device because my volume is there loud and clear. People are really hearing me out. If you are the first person coming on, say that you are not hearing me. That means your, <clears throat> your gadget has the problem. First fix it and then let's see. Now, Bruno Fernandes, he's scoring goals more than his number nine. Where do you find that? Where do you find that? You know? If he was really getting those balls and really feeding in Rasmus Hoyland and Rasmus Hoyland was missing out on those chances, I would have gone ahead to say, all right, Bruno has gone ahead to do his job, but Rasmus Hoyland has failed to score. But he doesn't even feed him in. And people come out and jubilate about the Brazilians going ahead to score. All the goals Bruno is scoring help him as a player. He's now having 52 Premier League goals. He's going to go down in history of Man United as one of those players that are really non-English, that I'm going to hit to score 50 plus goals for the club of Man United. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and Deco, Ruud van Nistelrooy, Anton Martial, and now Bruno Fernandes. That is it. But if you are to look into what a number 10 is supposed to be doing, he shouldn't be here at the club of Man United. I reiterate this on several occasions in the words of the man who is a co-owner for the club of Man United. He was asked on which player he thinks Man United is missing out. He said, we are missing out on to what we call a number 10. And if a person, hear me out, if a person like Sir Jim Ratcliffe comes out and says, we are missing out on number 10, you know, that means it's really the problem because we are having a player known as Bruno Fernandes, who is being played as our number 10, and he cannot do the number 10 role. He can't. He can't. Because a number 10 is supposed to give us control. Now, in the game like that, it's 1-1. One, one. Did you see our number 10 doing what you call the control? What's control? Do you see what Odegaard does all Kevin De Bruyne? You know? 
get that ball, knock it around, don't run and don't run and howly like what Bruno Fernandez does. Bruno Fernandez runs and howly. It's like they're telling him, please, if you don't release that ball, you're already going to really face it rough, or you're losing your life. That's the problem with Bruno Fernandez. He plays like he's losing his life in games of football like that. Yet you are supposed to obviously give us control and we see to it that we really get into the best way possible. You know? I know people will say, Eric Ten Hag is the problem now. In that game, where is Eric Ten Hag the problem? Tell me. For me, picking up players, I'm no longer blaming the manager. Do you know why? You are not there during the training sessions. You are not there. You get? You are not there. And it doesn't require a player very many minutes to prove us on the field of play. You get? It doesn't require any minutes. You know? Ten Hag came up and named that 11. So you think that 11 shouldn't go ahead and really beat and beat uh, and beat Bournemouth. All right. People are saying, and I was too saying, Marcus Rashford was not going to start. Right? Now, all right. Rashford is off. Let's count him as a player who is not going to do anything like he did, like he didn't in the game. So, one player that you expected not to start to be included into the team should be a scapegoat, not to blame the players and go to the manager. Does that make sense? We had 11 players on the field of play. Where were the others? <clears throat> Where were the others? The day you'll obviously sit down and really synchronize about this, you know, there is an Amoeba, the club of Man United, that is really building up and has been building up for years. Do you know who that Amoeba is? It's the players of Man United. It's the players, they engulf every manager and eat him up until when that manager gets a sack. You know, those are the players. I want to let you know that apart from David Moyes, all the players of Man United have gone ahead to come in through and really put in a shift in the first season of the manager. When Louis van Hal came in here, we played well, qualified for the Champions League, you know, and did the needful. Second season, you know what happened? We finished fifth and won the FA Cup. The manager got a sack. Jose Mourinho came in through. In his first season, we never completed or we never went ahead to win uh, the fourth spot. But he was sure he was going to win the UEFA Europa League and go ahead and really play in the Champions League. That is Jose Mourinho for you. Then, guess what the players did in the second season? They got Jose Mourinho sacked. 2016-2017, 2017-2018, Jose Mourinho got himself a sack. You know, 2018, who comes in through? Ole Gunnar Sosha. When Ole Gunnar Sosha comes in through, they go back to the same old song. They gave him a very brilliant season. He finished third. In the second season, he finished second. You get third season, they threw him under the bus. <clears throat> now, if you follow that permutation very well, who is the constant? Tell me. Who is the constant? Who is the constant? Come here, talk to me. Who is the constant? I've told you, the constant are the players. Do you now agree with me? I know you might be having your own thoughts and really sayings, but I tell you, the constant has always been the players. The constant has always been the players. You'll come out and say the manager is the problem or what I tell you. I tell you, <clears throat> if the players were really good enough, they would have gone ahead to do what <laughs> Chelsea players did in 2012 when they won the Champions League. It was not up to the manager. It was up to the players, the drug bars, the Lampards. Um, they raised up to the occasion. They raised up to the occasion and they kept their team proud. Now, you want to tell me, you want to tell me that one player, you, I know most of you are going to be coming here, Rokani, Rashford shouldn't have gone ahead to start. Now, what did other players do on that field of play? Tell me, what did they do? Did you see any other chance that we created that was, oh, that was really a very mouth-watering chance that our oh, Rasmus Whelan would have gone ahead to miss out on it? No. Leave alone the display. I've gone ahead to see people saying, we don't have a style of play. Now, <laughs> let's talk about the bare minimums. 
the bare minimums are intensity and hard work. Tell me which player on the field of play worked hard today. Tell me how Rasmus Hoyland leads the press. Rashford, Bruno Fernandes are really trying to hold or to support their shoulder. Sorry, their waist with their hands. Rasmus Hoyland was like blowing out his hands in anger that I'm pressing and you guys are just moving on. Meaning that these players are not meant to be players for the club of Man United because you'll never find a team of Liverpool not putting in the intensity. Those are the bare minimums I'm talking about. So you are here to don't come out and obviously talk about these players yet they've gone ahead to be the constants in everything we've gone ahead to not achieve at the club of Man United. The players are the problem. And I tell you, do you know why the players are the problem? It's because every person who was responsible for their recruitment at the club of Man United has been shown the exit door by Sir Jim Ratcliffe. Sir Jim Ratcliffe has been audible about this. He said, the manager is not the problem because... Man United has gone ahead to bring in good managers, and guess what? They've failed, meaning that the problem is on the board and the players. That is it. You know, what is failing our team to prosper? It's the board and the players. I tell you, when you look at that structure that Ineos is really setting up, if it stands well, gets Eric Ten Hag where he deserves to be, you're going to see a different team of Man United. I don't want to repeat my words all the time, but Eric Ten Hag has gone ahead to come here on several occasions, and he has said, one, asked, <clears throat> why don't you play like how you're playing at Ajax? He said, I don't have the people that I used to work with at Ajax at Man United. He was talking about Edwin van der Sar and the sporting director known as Mark Overmas, meaning that he was indirectly telling the people that I'm having competent people at the job and tell me why Eric Ten Hag still has the job of Man United and um, the following people have gone ahead to leave. One. <coughs> Sorry about that. And the following people have gone ahead to leave. One. Tell me what wrong did the sea of Man United do? Richard Arnold. Because they went ahead to evaluate him and he was incompetent. Why did we go in for Omar Berada for Man City? Because we are looking in for competency that we never had at the club of Man United. You understand? Now, tell me why John Mata has gone ahead to leave the club of Man United. Why has he left? He has been acting as the sporting director for the club of Man United. Why has he left? He has left because he's incompetent. Why are we wanting to bring in Dan Ashworth? I'm, I'm asking you, you know, if it's not the incompetence of those people, why do you think United is willing to spend 10 million pounds plus to bring in a sporting director? You get? Because that man, that man has gone ahead to build the project of the English national team. He was with England at the World Cup. <clears throat> He built the project of, of uh, Brighton. He built the project of Newcastle. When you look at the recruitment of Newcastle, they've gone ahead to bring in players that Manchester United would have gone ahead to bring, but we failed to convince those players to come to Man United. Steve Bootman. Clear and Trippier. Snubbed Man United and went to Newcastle. <laughs> Can you imagine? Who was the mastermind? Dan Ashworth. Bruno Gimares would have been a player playing in at Man United. They got him for like 50 million euros. And for us, went ahead and brought in Casemiro a season later, you know, for how many million euros? 80 million euros. Can you imagine? 80 million euros. And Bruno Gimares was there for 50 million euros. And we never had the urge to obviously bring him in. And guess what? Who is the man injuring all that? Danny Ashworth. Now, they have Alexandria Ishak. He now has 17 goals in the Premier League. You know? Dan Ashworth at work. Sandro Tinali, if it's not all about the betting staff, he would have gone ahead to be having one of the best seasons in his career at Newcastle. You get? Look at Anthony Gordon. 
all the players they've gone ahead to bring in through are on spot. That's the power of really bringing in players <coughs> that are really good and you don't give him huge salaries or astronomical wages. But for Man United, giving players astronomical wages has gone ahead to term, has gone ahead to become even the second name of Man United because if a player is to be convinced to come into and play for Man United, it's a given that we need to come out and obviously offer him a lot of money. That is stupid about us. And we don't we don't really put it to a pause. We are only continuing to do that. That's why when Sir Jim came in through, he was like, I don't need to see United being paying its players huge amounts of money. That is it. So before you really go to the manager. Sir Jim Ratcliffe knows it very well. The manager is not the problem. I don't want you <coughs> to be here, right, being blindfolded by the pundits you are really listening to, you know, in whatever country. I know every person you hear, hear me out, every person you hear come out and blame the manager of Man United. I tell you, that person is naive as far as this game of football is concerned. <coughs> we let Man United to Arsenal, to Liverpool, and so on and so on to the big teams in the world you know if they are building something new what do they do they have to be having the competent board to really draw the right project now do we have a competent board to draw the right project the answer is no you know and <clears throat> are we getting in the right people to do the right project yes we are are we doing it on time the answer is no we are doing it off time <clears throat> But I tell you, if you are having players that are fighting for the club of Man United and they know what to do, they don't concede later against Brentford because you want to tell me that conceding later against Brentford was all about Eric Ten Hag. You know, was it all about Eric Ten Hag? All right, we admit the manager is poor. What of the players? What of the players? <laughs> so you go to Chelsea. You lose a game of football in the last 80 seconds. Diego Dalo gives a penalty. Bruno Fernandes just pointing at a player who hits us on target to go to see that ball go into the back of the net. That is Carl Palmer. Against Liverpool, Bisaka does what he does in an area where he doesn't where he's not supposed to go down, he goes down and fouls a player. Today you've gonna hit to see what has happened. Two times behind. No intensity, no energy to see to it that we really get into that game and win it. No plan for these players. And it shows you that they are just not good enough. You might be there thinking that we're really having good enough players, but these players aren't good enough. If you want to know that they're not good enough, do a combined 11 of Man United versus Liverpool. Of Man United versus Arsenal, of Man United versus Tottenham Hotspur, of Man United versus Man City. How many United players get into that Man City team? I think Andrew Onana gets there. I think uh, Dalo gets there. Mm, Kobe Menu gets there. No other player gets three of our players get into that City team. When you go to Arsenal, I think Kobe Menu gets in there. I think it's only Kobe Menu that gets in that team of Arsenal. No one else. You see how ugly we are. If you want to know that these players are not good enough, <clears throat> compare them with the teams you're competing with. When you go to Liverpool, mm, I think it's only Kobe Menu. <laughs> that is it. Who else? So the only player that we have that can fit in all the teams that are playing the champions that, that are playing the that are playing the Premier League is Kobe Menu because every team would love to have a player like him. You know? But that Bruno Fernandez will never get there. You can't tell me that Ateta will pick Bruno Fernandez ahead of Odegaard. Never in the world. You know? You can't tell me that um that the manager of Liverpool will pick Bruno Fernandez ahead of Sobasilai. No way. You can't tell me that the manager of Man City will pick Bruno Fernandes ahead of Kevin De Bruyne. Now, if you thought that our team is good enough, <clears throat> look at that. And then you'll get to know that we are not having players. When I call out for what we call 
a clean out. It's really what we want. It's really what the team needs. These players are not meant to play for the club of Man United. They are meant to be playing for other teams, not the club of Man United. No way. You get? No way. You get? So, I tell you, I tell you, you should face reality. And what's the reality? Man United players are not good as you think they are. These players are really worse than what you think. We need a clean out, and this clean out should be done as soon as possible. If the players came in through to rest for seven days, we last played on Sunday, the rest are on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, five days of rest, see what they've gonna hate obviously avail us onto our TV screens today. It's abysmal. And for everyone who still thinks that these players are good enough, let me show you <coughs> these stats and then you'll come to agreement with me that Rokani, what you're talking is right, that the players are the problem. I tell you, I don't have any energy left to obviously go at my manager. No way. Because <coughs> this has been the sequence here at Man United. A vicious circle of shifting the blame from the players to the manager. Now, we should attack these players because they are what we call the common element into <coughs> the cycle of United for the last 10 years, ever since Alex Ferguson left. Now, Bournemouth had 20 shots. For everyone who is who is really coming in through to throw in a towel for these players, hear this out. <coughs> Bournemouth had 20 shots at goal of Man United. How many did Man United have? Eight. You are talking of a team that has good players and you're blaming the manager and the team is conceding 20 shots and for us we had only 8. Stupid. I cannot come out and really say the manager is the problem. And for everyone who thinks Ten Hag is the problem then you don't really know what you're talking about. Look, 20 shots, <coughs> 8 shots by the club of Man United. You know, we are really bad. We are banger average. And there is no reason that we should come out and really have anything to say about this. <clears throat> Five shots on target by Bournemouth. United had only two. Have you had? Two shots on target for the club of Man United. And you come out and you think that we are really having good players that can compete with other teams. We don't. 43% <laughs> possession by Bournemouth. We had 37% of the possession, but... It doesn't matter if you obviously have a lion share of the possession and don't win the game of football. 380 passes completed by Bournemouth, 522 passes completed by Man United, 75% passing accuracy by Bournemouth, 81% passing accuracy by Man United, 13 fouls by Bournemouth, 14 fouls by Man United, 4 yellow cards by Bournemouth, 0 yellow cards by Man United. <coughs> Zero red cards to both sides, one offside to Bournemouth and two to Man United. Seven corners, hear me out, seven corners to the club of Bournemouth, two corners to the club of Man United. And you come out and you really come out and say the manager is the problem. I tell you, the manager will come out and really tell the players, go to that field of play, run. I've already told you this and you all agree with me at a point X that even if you are a quality player, all what makes you is simple coming out and really living up to the expectation. And how do you live up to the expectation? Go ahead, do the needful, and really kill this game off. Run, run, put in the hard work. If you don't put in the hard work, there is no way you're going to really equal any person that is really bang average. <clears throat> That's what Brentford does. They put in the hard work and they don't wait for anything else to obviously put them off. And that's what they did. They ran and we gifted them two easy goals. The first goal you saw to eat that, <clears throat> Alejandro Ganacho, Rasmus Hoyland, chest passes that ball to him. He loses that ball. After losing that ball, he stands. He stands. By the way, I was really <clears throat> excited when Ten Hag took him off because he was not in the game. I tell you, he has, he has a spot on all the two goals that we concede. He lost the ball easily and he couldn't track back. Kambwala is just a secondary victim. 
But who is the primary victim? It's Ganacho. Look at how we lose that ball. Look at how we lose it. And in the new course of losing it, see what happens. <clears throat> see what happens. So, Ganacho is the culprit that leads us to the first goal. The second goal, Ganacho fails to go to the touchline and really mark that game, that player. And he leaves. And he leaves. Uh, he leaves uh, the man responsible, Diego Dallo, <coughs> in a two, in a two v one situation. He had two players to mark, and he was spot of choice. They score a second goal because of Alejandro Ganacho, because if Ganacho goes ahead to mark the man at the touchline, you understand, and then Diego Dallo closes in on Clivert. Do you know what happens? They don't score that goal. They don't score that goal. But he was really dilly darling in the game, <clears throat> and I really understood why Ten Hag took him off. He was not doing the needful. He puts in a cross, it was poor, but the defender failed to care his very well. Bruno scores. How many times did he get onto that edge of the Tina's box area when very many players of United have gone ahead to commit themselves there and he goes ahead to obviously give in what we call a stupid pass? How many times did he get there? And we are counter-attacked back. Yet we had gone ahead to commit numbers in the final third of the pitch. So, you think Ten Hag is on who tells Ganacho to do that? He tells him, do the needful. Don't lose the ball when you lose it. Track back. I tell you, if Ganacho tracks back and runs after losing that ball, he becomes a defender and sees Solanke not hitting that ball when uh, Kambwala is down. That's what I loved about Hannibal. Hannibal loses the ball. He doesn't lose the ball. When another player of United is going to hit lose the ball, Hannibal tracks back. Hannibal tracks back. For me, I don't want to hear anyone talking about we are having injuries. If you tell me that you're having injuries when you're playing against Liverpool, I'll say yes, because Liverpool is one of the best teams in the world. But Bournemouth, Bournemouth, any player that puts on the jazz of Marina should be able to come in through and really get three points from the Vitality Stadium. Now, Let's go to Nobo <clears throat> Kasomwe. We are still suffering, obviously. Hachilala, this is disgusting. True that. Very, very horrific display. Then Kasomwe, I'm not sure even conference we can play. Why should we why should we even be in Europe? I ask you guys. Let's be let's let's be sure to ourselves. Do you think we've gonna hate to put in a shift that really deserves us to be playing in Europe? I don't think so. I don't think so. Um I'm having Emerson at Jukire. We may end up losing all our remaining games. We have worst players in the league. I tell you, because if you're having quality players, they can easily gang up and say, all right, all right. People have gone ahead to say our manager is bad, but we players can do the needful. Because if you're an experienced player, it doesn't need you to do a far against Chelsea like that. You know, Look at Kambuala today, you know, Kambala has found himself in a situation where it's a 1v1 when I think Christie goes past him, he faces Onana. He gets hold of him outside the 18 yards box area. It's a free kick, though the referee first pointed into a penalty, but it's a free kick. The same thing Dallow was supposed to be doing against Chelsea for us to get those three points in. Bisaka just needed to get hold onto his position and really defend our goal, not to go in for Harvey Elliott. You understand? So, Kambwala, a 19-year-old, has gone ahead to do something that players that we call experience cannot do. You get? That is the problem. Every now chan, I'm sure the coach is not telling these players what to do. He tells them what to do. Now, this coach you're talking about coached an Ajax side. You get? He coached an Ajax side to the semi-finals of the Champions League. He beat... He eliminated uh, Juventus. Uh, he eliminated Real Madrid. There is even another team they eliminated there. You know, three big teams. I think it was Inter Milan, Juventus, and Real Madrid. You know, he came to England. He beat Spurs by one goal to nil. Spurs went to Ajax, beat Ten Hag by three goals to two. You know, now... 
this manager is a quality manager. He's one of those choices that Man City thought of before he came to Man United that could replace Pep Guardiola. That could replace Pep Guardiola. Even Pep Guardiola said he's looking at Eric Ten Hag as one of those managers that should come in and replace him. Now, he's the manager talking that he never gives the players the right tactics. He has the right tactics, but he's giving them to the wrong players. That is it. <laughs> Blessed Les, Rokani, I disagree with you about Eric Ten Hag being the perfect man for United. Even Oli is much more better than the guy. Remember, those are the teams who used to beat. Now, I tell you, can you tell me the run that led to the sucking of, of, of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Watford beat him. Leicester City beat him. Liverpool beat him. Four teams. He lost games. And there is no way you're going to talk about Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and equation. Where has he coached? Tell me his pedigree. <clears throat> tell me where Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is going to have to be successful. Had he ever coached in the Champions League before? Has he ever gone ahead to beat teams? You know? <clears throat> Look. Against big teams that Ten Hag is going to have to face and how he's going to have to be doing. Ten Hag is going to have to be having injuries. You know? Even right now, Anton is going to have to join the queue of injured players. Scott McTominay is there. Luke Shaw is there. Lisandro Martinez is there. Malasia is there. Veran is there. Um... Linderoff is there, John Evans is there. How many injuries are those? We are having close to 10 injuries. Now, you tell me in the season that this guy got sacked. Did he have any injuries? He never had injuries. All his players were there. Paul Pogba was there. You know, Bruno Fernandes was there. Nemanja Matic was there. Cristiano Ronaldo was there. Mm, um, who else? Mason Greenwood was there. Luke Shaw was there. Dalo was there. Bisaka was there. Maguire was there. Name it. Sancho was there. Veran was there. Every player was there. <laughs> you know, every player was there. I think even Cavani was there. Now, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You know, Ten Hag has shown you that every time we get our players back, he plays well. But we've gone ahead to lose our players. The coach is not good enough, suffering for both small and big teams. Can I? I've gone ahead to give you examples. Now, you tell me, you tell me, you think the manager is the problem? I tell you this. Sosha was never the problem of Man United. <clears throat> Louis Van Hal was not the problem of Man United. Um, Mourinho, never the problem. Eric Ten Hag, never the problem. The problem is with the board. If you think the manager is the problem, why is it that they haven't gone ahead to sack him? Why is it that people have gone ahead to leave at the board? Why are people at the board leaving? Who are they leaving? Because after doing what we call a very huge assessment at the club of Man United, it's the board first and the player second. Remember what Ralph Rangnick talked about when he came in here. The players were not willing to run and do the training was telling them to do. He said, we need an open heart surgery. We need players that can match the intensity of the modern game. You know, I tell you, <laughs> if next season you get in Onana to play in that midfield with Kobe Mainu, it's a different United team altogether. You get? If you get in uh, Todibo to play with Lisandro Martinez in that defense, it's a different United team altogether. If you get in Olise to play as the right attack midfielder for the club of Man United, it's a different team altogether. We need to really sweep out players. We need to sweep out. Let's sweep out players and get in players that can manage the modern game. Emerson, Bruno is the worst number 10 in the league. He treat the ball like a grenade. You're right. It's like he's going to bust over his leg. He's the worst number 10. And you know, People come out and say, he's really an exceptional player. What makes him exceptional? What makes him exceptional? You know? What makes him exceptional is getting into the best team in the world. Now, Kobe Maini, who has just gone ahead to come in, can get into every team in the world. But Bruno Fernandes cannot. No way. No way. These players are banger average. If you think we are having players, we are not having players. 
We are not having players. The team is useless altogether. I tell you, the problem is the players. I've, co I've, I've, I've always gone ahead to ask you, what has been the common denominator? You know, what has been the common denominator ever since Alex Ferguson left? It has been the players. <laughs> Who has always gone ahead to suffer? It's the managers, not so. They've sucked Moyes. They've sucked Louis Van Gaal. They've sucked Jose Mourinho. They've sucked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. They've sucked Raf Ragnick. The players are the problem. You know, they, are, they think they're untouchable. And time has gone ahead to come to get these players out and really tell them that, all right, you've gone ahead to end shell yourself for a very long time. Now, it's high time you left. Omar Berada made a statement that if a player cannot deliver for two consecutive seasons, he's sold. He's out of the team. Now, why do we have these players still here when they are not really, really performing? Ten Hag has wanted players out. What has going to have to be told him by the board? We cannot move on Harry Maguire. We cannot move on Scott McTominay. <laughs> that is it. That was the communication coming in through from the board. Now, which kind of board is that? Which kind of board is that? Because incompetency was at its best. You are talking about Rashford, but the coach is not seeing that. It's then Hag letting us down Rokani. If you have not been watching football, you can say that I've not been watching football. Let me give you an example. <laughs> Look at Arsenal. Martinelli had worst 70 minutes. You get? Where they're playing against Bayern Munich. You get? So, did it mean that Arsenal had to implode in that game? You get? Did it mean that Arsenal had to implode? Now, if you think Rashford is the problem, we play against Man City, right? So, we are playing against Chelsea, right? Rashford came in to play like the last 20 minutes. You get? So, is it because of Rashford that we consider penalty and we lose the game of Chelsea? <laughs> I have lots of examples to give you. In the game of Liverpool, Rashford is the problem. I've always going to highlight it. He gets off around the 60th minute, 30 minutes to play. We are leading. What happens? Bisaka rewards a penalty. And you want to come out and say that the problem is because... Bisaka, Dalo, rewarding penalties. You want to obviously pinpoint that to the manager. And you say I've not been watching football. If you want to play the best football ever, and you have to implement your style, you have to be having your players. Now, Ten Hag, out of the players going here to sign, he doesn't have Lisandro Martinez. He doesn't have Terrell Malasia. He doesn't have... Um, who else? Casimiro is here. Um... Rasmus Hoyland is doing good. Um, who else? Mount came on. He's not having almost his players that he's really having. And I tell you, when you're not having your players that are supposed to be doing the job, you can't be doing the need for. And people are coming out to blame the manager. And look at the team of Man United. If So, this is a question I want to pose to you, blessed Les. Can I, can, can I pose you this question? Do you think if at all you get Pep Guardiola to that team of Man United, we, get, we, 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 can, we can really play like Man City? Do you think we can win a Premier League? Do you think we can be playing in the quarterfinals of the Champions League? Do you think we can win a Champions League? No way. <laughs> no way. Because Pep had to see Man City cleaned out before he arrived. Bash BG. Man United is dying slowly. We are losing hope. <clears throat> I told you. I think the game of the game of Brentford just showed me that we are not going to play in the Champions League next season because if you're having players with the right mentality, they knew what to do. If you a fan who is watching this channel knows what to do when you're really going down, what of a player who is paid hundreds of thousands of pounds? Don't you think he doesn't know what to do? Compact and make it hard for Brentford to break you down. Simple. Why do you keep on attacking? You've not been attacking for the entire 90 minutes. You get a goal and you want to attack. For what? Defend that one goal. Go back to Manchester. A happy team. 
Sylvia, Silver Onyate, United. Man United to compete for the title race. It needs to destroy all the squad and maybe people who will Kobe Mainu, Ganacho, Ahmad Diallo, Martinez, and Onana <coughs> may be Dalo. This team need this team needs to be rebuilt. <laughs> we need to really move on players. You saw what Ten Hag did to get Ronaldo out of the team. We need to get out of the team because if you get out a player like Ronaldo who gets in more money for the club of Man United, then how do you tell me that you cannot obviously dislodge these other players? Sell them off. Sell them off. I would rather play a season with Ganacho, Kambwala, <coughs> Rasmus Hoyland, and very many others, the youngsters, other than having these players here. I would rather play without these big stars. Um, Michael Olumide, Man United is death already. Going nowhere. To Mohimbise Titus, the problem is defense. Not really. Are we scoring goals? Who are not? You cannot tell me that you cannot defend against Bournemouth. No way. We've gone ahead to gift away stupid goals. And you are supposed to defend as a unit and attack as a unit. Every time a player downs tools, the press is done. If the press doesn't have what we call a full press, it's not a press. It won't really give you results. You have to press that team wholesale. Every player should be marking and pressing because if you don't press, that player you don't press just makes himself available and he's given that ball and he has to obviously cause problems to you. Um, Sylvia Onyet, what was Casemiro, Dalo, Rashford and Ganacho doing today, guys? All of that team, I tell you, all of that team was doing nothing. It was doing nothing. Apart from Bruno scoring goals, no other play. I think Kambala had a very beautiful game, by the way, <coughs> according to me. Maguire, too, had a very good game. The rest of the play, even Kobe Mani today was really lost. He was lost in the team. That's, what, that's why I tell you that quality complements quality. Iron sharpens iron. As Livia Silva on yet, I think from today, Ten Hag has the goodness of Ahmad Diallo. When he's the field, he should. I think that is it. Ahmad should start. You saw the composure Ahmad gets us when he gets on the field of play. Ahmad should be starting games. He should be starting games because he has something different that gives out him something special. You know, he builds up everything very well. The way he distributes that ball, everything is on point from him. And I was asking myself, why were players looking so much for Marcus Rashford, who had gone ahead to be doing nothing that game, other than looking for Ahmad Diallo. It's something simple. Get Marcus Rashford out of the game. Every ball you get, get it to the magic man that is Ahmad Diallo to produce moments of magic. Uh, Aradi, I don't like your excuse, bro. Your manager doesn't know how to do subs. That is where there is a problem, but he sees as if he's, he is a seller of Rotten Posho. How you see... I tell you, People come out and blame Ten Hag. Can I ask you, who was the manager of Man United last season? Who was the manager of Manchester United last season? It was Ten Hag. Was he managing the same players? Yes. Was he giving them the right tactics? Yes. Now, how come you say he does not manage? He cannot manage the club of Man United. He was managing the same players. The constants are the players and the manager. That is it. The constants are the manager and the players. He was managing the same players last season. We finished third. <coughs> we won a Carabao Cup. We played in the FA Cup finale and lost to Man City. Knocked out of the quarterfinals of the UEFA Europa League. Now, you mean last season Ten Hag was a good manager and this season is not a good manager. Do those two add up? Isn't that a contradiction? Last season Ten Hag was a good manager and giving the players right tactics. You get? And now you say he's not good. Does it match up? Because for him, he'll give them the tactics he gave them last season. He will. Now, that means it's evident and you're answering yourself that the problem is the players. I've told you the problem of money United the players because they are not implementing what the manager is telling them to do. You can sit on the field of play. Tell me which player you saw dying for that team. It was only Rasmus Hoyle on the pitch. Kambwala and Harry Maguire. Three players. The rest were dilly-dallying and they're like, 
whatever happens, whatever happens. And they are not even bothered. They are not even bothered. You know, we should move away these players. We should move them out. And this is why Ten Hag always has to get Scott McTominay in the game because Scott McTominay comes and really runs. However much he's not good of a bowler and his quality is really doubted, but he'll obviously run and die for that club. I tell you, if you're having six players in that team of Man United running like Scott McTominay, we win very many games. We win very many games because they won't really down tools. They'll run until their lungs bust out. You get? These players cannot run. Oyika Moses, I'm tired of Man United, bro. Don't get tired. This is our team. <clears throat> Time is going to come. Joseph Art Kab Kabe, boss, we are not happy with the style of play. Now, you know, I'm one of those people who have always gone ahead to say that this manager is tested. <clears throat> we want ahead to see him at Ajax. Didn't you see his style of play? Don't you know his style of play? Ask yourself, why isn't he bringing that style of play to the club of Man United? You know, the answer is written all over the wall. On a clean canvas, moreover, he doesn't have the right players to implement that style of play that you want him to implement. That is it. And if he has his starting 11, he can play that ball very well from the back, through the midfield, to the attacking line. <laughs> that is it. And he doesn't have Lisandro Martinez, a spine of his style of play. He doesn't have him. He doesn't have Luke Shaw. He doesn't have Trevor Malassia. And what do you expect him to be doing? <laughs> Nothing. Because he said every team is built starting from the back five, the goalkeeper and the back four. Tell me which team doesn't really need those. Why does Pep Guardiola go in for Josco Vadio for 85 million euros? Why did he buy Ruben Diaz for 60? Why did he buy Carl Walker for 50? Why did he buy John Stones for 50 million pounds? Because he knows to eat that. He needs quality center backs. And why does he go for quality players. If Pep Guardiola is a good manager, right? Why doesn't he go in for mediocre players and say, all right, I'm Pep Guardiola. I can turn water into wine like Jesus Christ at Canaan. You get? I can use whichever kind of player I really want to win the trophy. <clears throat> Pep Guardiola has gone ahead to get himself the best players in the world. Why? And you want to sit and hug pulling the rabbit out of the heart with Harry Maguire, Scott McTominay, Aaron Wan Bissaka, uh -huh, Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes, of which none of those players fits into the team of Man City, Arsenal and Liverpool. None goes into that team. Pep Guardiola cannot play Bruno Fernandes. He cannot play uh, he cannot play Rashford. He cannot play Harry Maguire. He cannot play Bisaka, he cannot play um, Scott McTominay, name it. When you look at the players that Ten Hag is going to bring in, are the players that can easily fit into other teams? Kobe Mainu can fit, Lisandro Martinez can fit, um, Ganacho can, Rasmus Hoyland can. You get those are the players that we're talking about, quality players. So I want you people to really see this. Ten Hag talked about seeing the invisible, you know. If you are really seeing things plainly, you're not going to understand me. You need to see things differently, you know. You need to get to know that Man United is a team that has been suffering for the last 10 years. Go ahead and really open your encyclopedia. Have we been facing the same problems ever since Alex Ferguson left? The answer is yes. Have we gone ahead to change managers? The answer is yes. Who have been here for so long? <clears throat> the players. Luke Shaw has been here. I think he's now the longest serving player at the club of Man United. Luke Shaw, um, Rashford, um, these players are going to have to see close to five, six, five managers. You get? From Maurice Van Hal, Luke Shaw, Rashford. They've been here. <clears throat> to Jose Mourinho, Scott McTominay. 
you get. Um, who else? Dallas been here. Linderoff has been here. Um, Rashford has been here. Mm -hmm. Then we go to um, Louis Van Hal. You go to Oliguna Sosha, Harry Maguire, Veran, um, and others. So we are having players from different managers. When you look at Arsenal, lastly, as I really come to this because I don't, I don't want it to exceed one hour. When you look at Arsenal, that is now competing to really win the trophy into consecutive seasons. Look at the clean out that the manager of Arsenal had to make. The only player at Arsenal is El Nini. You get Saka and Martinelli. Saka and Martinelli Edinketia. Emily Smith Rowe. Academy graduates. You get the rest of that Arsenal team has gone ahead to obviously be changed. David Raya, Benjamin White, Zinchenko, Saliba, Gabriel Mangales, Declan Rice, Kai Havertz, Odegaard, uh, Jesus. Nine out of the 11 players that start for, Man for Arsenal have been brought in by Mikel Arteta. That's what Man United should do. We should reach an extent when out of the nine when out of the eleven players, eight or nine have gone ahead to be brought in by the new manager and the new board. Then you'll see United thriving. But before we really see those players out, there is no way we are gonna add dots. That is it. And I tell you, if you're having Onana, Dalo, Luke Shaw, Lisandro Martinez, Todibo. Kobe Menu, another CDM, uh, right Anthony, left Ganacho, Rasmus Hoyland. How many players will be having that starting 11 that have gone ahead to be coming from the old regime? Dalo, Luke Shaw, Bruno Fernandez. Only three. Not until we reach that level, that's when we will really see this team change. But if I told you are really doing a mix up, look at Liverpool. All those players now at Liverpool, most of them are going to have to be signed by that man. <laughs> that is it. Um, we are like new. We are like Newcastle. It come to injuries, but see how the press pass. I told you. Now you understand me. That problem is the players. You think Ten Hag? You think Eddie Hoy has better tactics than Eric Ten Hag? No way. No way. He doesn't. He doesn't. Ten Hag is a very good manager, quality and proven. And if I don't want to say that Ten Hag is really <clears throat> is really a good manager, let him get sacked at Man United and see whether he'll really take years to get a job. In just a month or two months, he'll he'll be employed. Bayern Munich are just not going in for Eric Ten Hag because they know to eat that. United is not gonna sack him. But very many big clubs in the world will want to give Eric Ten Hag a job. Now, let me give you some stats. Before I really sign out, Eric Ten Hag's winning percentage is better than that of Pep Guardiola, Mikel Arteta, and Jagen Klopp in his first 110 games in the Premier League. Go and check. Come here. That's the manager you want to sack. At Old Trafford, out of the other managers that are going to have to come through and play the game of the Bayern Munich and manage Man United, Eric Ten Hag is the only manager next to Salex Ferguson. Salex Ferguson has a winning percentage of 73% at Old Trafford. Eric Ten Hag has 70, I think 70, 71%. All those are stats that show you how this good this manager is. You back him with good players and get him a good board. He takes us to where we deserve to be. Eddie Hoy will never go anywhere near teams like managing teams like Man United, Arsenal, Liverpool, and very many others. He's not a good manager. He's not. But he's having players that have the right mentality. And look at that team of Newcastle. How many players are they going to bring in? Clean Trippier, <coughs> Fabian Shah, Steve Botman, uh, uh, Bruno Gimarez. He brought in Arthur Gordon. He brought in Ishak. 
I think he signed Willow Kone permanent. That's the sequency. A manager has to be having eight, nine players in that team when they are new. Sandro Tinali, he brought him in and is doing fine. You understand? So look at other teams you're talking about and the players they're really having. They're having players with the right mentality. Have they kept players for long at Newcastle? No. No. They've gone ahead to do what we call a sweep. They've gone ahead to sweep out players of the old mentality and they've gone ahead obviously fill that team with players with the modern mentality. Allow Lincoln's Man United need to clear off many players and buy good and active players. That is it. Even if you get Pep Guardiola in that team, they'll come out in the first season, perform very well. Second season, they down tools. The same sequence repeats itself. Now, aren't you fed up of that recycling? Let's break that sequence, right? Let's keep the manager here. To show these players that even if you down tools, this manager is going to be here and we are going to deal with you. This time round, no sucking the manager. We are dealing with the players and you will see things changing at the club of Man United. The mentality of those players will change. But each and every time you keep sucking the manager, those players will dilly dally and feel like now this manager, it's high time he went. The media, the, the media is like, on our side the manager needs to go not until we turn tables we should shake tables at the club of man united and his so-called players who are earning huge amounts of money and they are doing nothing should leave the club of money in the bamosh right when did we last beat a team five goals and above for me talking about scoring five goals and above that doesn't show the quality of man united you mean a team that scores five goals is the one that is good enough. <laughs> That's not it. What shows the goodness of a team are the stats and how we play and how these players perform. I might be having a team. Look at the team of Spurs. They've gone ahead to lose today, but they had a lion show of the possession and Newcastle had 27%, but Newcastle went ahead to just turn out to be clinical and Spurs never used their possession. You know, Spurs are really progressing very well. And trust me, Ange Pasekeglu has gone to do a very good job at Spurs. You get? But them losing today doesn't say they're a bad team. You get? So, for me, winning is the last product. And scoring those very many goals, that's the last product that will ever come out and really say that the team is playing very well. So, you mean when a team doesn't score five goals, it's an ugly team. Can I remind you of a team of Jose Mourinho that he had at Chelsea that went ahead to win 15 out of the 32 games they won in a season at one goal. They won by one goal to nil. One goal to nil. One goal to nil. They went ahead to lift a trophy. Salix Ferguson said, let me throw this to you and bring you up to speed. Clean sheets. Win. Trophies. Goals win matches. Have you got him right? How would you bench Ganacho and leave Rashford? Ganacho had to be benched. Ganacho was the reason for us conceding two goals. Go out and watch those games. The first goal, he loses the ball, he dilly dallies. He just stands and looks on. The second goal, instead of marking the man towards the touchline, he leaves Dalo into a 2v1 situation. He was looking on like this. He had to be taken off. Ten Hag was good at Ajax. Even at United. Who was the manager of Man United last season? Tell me. Who was the manager of Man United last season? Tell me. Blessed Lars, before I really sign out, because I've gone ahead, obviously, a lap the one hour. Who was the manager of Manchester United last season? He was managing the same players, not so. And how come you say he's bad? So, guys, I sign out. See you later and may the living to